Most players lose money long before the river ever comes, not because they get unlucky, but because they misplay the simplest situations in poker, the no-pair hand and the one-pair hand. And in a zero-sum game like poker, every one of those mistakes becomes profit for someone else. Hi, I'm Terry Wood from PokerRailbird.com, and today we're going to discuss both hand types. We will break down the exact probabilities and mathematical structure of these two hands so that you'll never leak chips in them again. Most players think they understand pot odds and hand odds, but when the pressure is real and the money is in the pot, instinct takes over and the math disappears. That's why so many players misplay two of the most common situations in poker, the no-pair hand and the one-pair hand. Missing the flop with big cards, overvaluing a small pocket pair, calling just to see another card, these mistakes quietly drain more bankrolls than bad beats ever will. In this video, we're cutting through the noise. No advanced formulas. No solver jargon. Just clear, practical math applied to real situations you face every session. By the end, you'll understand exactly when a call is profitable, when it's a mistake, and why most players get this wrong. Before we dive into the examples, we need to anchor everything to one principle. It's simple, but most players never follow it, and it's the reason so many hands get misplayed. In poker, you only make mathematical decisions one street at a time. Not two cards at once. Not, maybe I'll hit by the river. Not, I'll call here and see another card. Every decision, turn, and river must be made using one card hand odds and the current pot odds, nothing else. When the flop hits, the only question is whether the cost of seeing the turn is mathematically justified. You are not deciding the flop and turn together. And when the turn comes, you're deciding the river nothing more. This is where the majority of players go wrong. They use the two card percentages they've memorized from charts or heard on TV, and it makes weak situations look far stronger than they are. A draw that's 35% by the river is nowhere near 35% for the next single card. Two over cards that are 24% by the river are nowhere near 24% for the turn decision. And when you use the wrong math, you end up calling in spots where the numbers simply do not justify it. But there's another side to this that matters just as much. Even though proper pot odds and hand odds calculations are done one street at a time, your strategy should always extend well beyond the next card. Before you call a single bet, you should already know what your plan is if you hit, what your plan is if you miss, how your opponent's range interacts with future turn and river cards, whether future cards help you or help them, and whether the hand has room for implied odds or the danger of reverse implied odds. Good players use correct one card math. Great players use correct one card math inside a full multi-street plan. When you combine the simplicity of one street decisions with the discipline of thinking through the entire hand, the game becomes dramatically clearer and your decisions become much harder for opponents to exploit. One more side note before we get started. Some of the trouble players get into with these hands starts before the flop ever comes, meaning poor hand selection. But this video isn't about hand selection. That's a full lesson of its own. Here, we're assuming you chose to play the hand and reach the flop for a good reason. Now the question is whether you play it profitably from this point forward. Before we break down the actual hands, I want to make one thing clear. In each of the examples in this video, we're evaluating the decision strictly through the lens of math, hand odds, pot odds, and nothing else. Poker is situational. In a real game, there are dozens of factors that can influence your decision. Table image, player tendencies, aggression levels, stack sizes, dynamics, live reads, and past history. But because none of that information is available here, we're isolating the math to demonstrate what the correct play would be in a vacuum. This isn't about outplaying someone, bluffing them off a hand, or constructing multi-street lines. This is about baseline profitability. Once you understand the math, then you can decide when to adjust. But the foundation never changes. If the math doesn't justify the call, the call is a losing play no matter how good it feels. Let's walk through one of the most common and most expensive situations in poker, raising preflop with ace-king, missing the flop, and facing a bet into multiple players. We're in a 1-3 game and raise the ace of spades, king of hearts to $15. For players call, we're going five ways to the flop with a $75 pot already built. Right away, that number matters. Anytime five players see a flop, someone will often connect with it in a meaningful way. With nine players dealt into the hand, there's also roughly a 54% probability that at least one player started with a pocket pair. The flop is the queen of clubs, seven of diamonds, and the two of hearts, completely dry and completely missing your hand. 
no pair, no straight draw, no flush draw, nothing but two over cards. Before you can even process it, the first player acts and leads out $50 into the $75 pot, making the new pot $125. Everyone else folds. Action is on you. This is where most players make a mistake, not because they're reckless, but because they're thinking about ace-king emotionally instead of mathematically. A hand that looked great before the flop suddenly becomes a psychological anchor. They don't want to waste a premium hand. They convince themselves that two big cards deserve another look, that they might spike an ace or a king. But once the flop is out, the only thing that matters is math, discipline, and the golden rule. One street, one decision. And the numbers here are crystal clear. With ace-king on this board, you have six outs, three aces and three kings. The chance of hitting one of those outs on the next card, the turn, is about 6.8 to 1 against you. In other words, you will miss almost seven times for every one time you hit. Now look at the pot odds you're being offered. You're facing a $50 bet to win a $125 pot. That's 2.5 to 1. Compare the two, hand odds, 6.8 to 1. Pot odds, 2.5 to 1. The numbers don't come close to matching. When your hand odds are far worse than your pot odds, a fold is your best course of action. Calling here is mathematically incorrect every single time unless you believe the villain is capable of turning this board into a bluff at an unusually high frequency. And in a five-way pot, leading $50 into four other players? That's almost never the case. And even if you were to hit an ace or a king on the turn, you're not always in the clear. Sets exist. Two pair is possible. That means your implied odds aren't great either, and the possibility of being dominated, if you do improve, makes calling even worse. In short, this looks like a frustrating spot because you raised with a strong pre-flop hand. But once the flop hits, ace-king offsuit becomes exactly what it is. A no-pair hand in a multi-way pot with bad pot odds, bad hand odds, and bad future prospects. The correct play is simple, fold and move on. Now let's look at another common leak, small and medium pocket pairs played in multi-way pots. Once again, we'll keep this in a real-world scenario to see the math exactly as it happens at the table. We're in a 1-3 game with the 9 of hearts and the 9 of diamonds in late position. We raise to $15, and just like the ace-king example for player's call, we're going to the flop 5 ways, and this immediately changes the landscape of the hand. When nine players are dealt into a hand, there is about a 22% probability that someone was dealt a higher pocket pair than our nines. Players holding hands like pocket tens and possibly even jacks would most likely not re-raise pre-flop. But then the flop comes with no over card to their pocket pair, or they hit a set, they will almost always bet the flop. The flop comes the ten of clubs, five of spades, and the two of spades. We now have second pair to the board, no spade, no straight draw, no redraws, just a pair of nines. The under the gun player checks, and the next player leads into the field for $40 into the $75 pot. That brings the pot to $115, and action folds around you. Before motion enters the picture, before the words, but it's a pocket pair, starts whispering in your mind. Let's look at this purely through the lens of math. To call the $40 bet, you are getting 2.9 to 1 pot odds. Now look at your hand odds. You have exactly two outs, the remaining two nines. The odds of hitting one of those outs on the next card, the turn, are roughly 22 to 1 against you. That's because out of 47 unseen cards, only two help you. You will miss this card about 96% of the time. Compare the numbers. Hand odds, 22 to 1. Pot odds, 2.9 to 1. These two figures aren't close. They aren't even on the same planet. Mathematically, continuing here is a losing play nearly every time but it gets worse. Even if the villain is betting a hand like ace anything of spades or a random two spade holding, hands that you technically beat right now, the next bet is coming. And on a board with two spades, an ace, king, queen, jack, any spade, and even some random cards become excellent barrels for an aggressive opponent. You're not just calling to see one card. You're calling to enter a world where most turn cards are bad for you and the ones that help you only show up about 4.3% of the time. And even if the Miracle 9 came, and it happened to be the 9 of spades, one of the two remaining 9s in the deck, now you are in real trouble. Pocket pairs feel strong, but they play weak in multi-way pots because they don't improve often, and the cards that don't improve you often improve your opponent's line or story. Will there be times you fold the best hand here? Yes, that comes with the territory. But if you refuse to fold second pair in losing mathematical situations, 
you will become the player who rarely folds a winner, but consistently pays off losing hands. That is the profile of a long-term losing player. The correct play here is simple, disciplined, and completely supported by the math. Fold. Here's the truth most players never confront. Every losing call you make with the wrong equity isn't just a small mistake. It's a compounding leak that snowballs across every session you play. When you misunderstand what your hand is actually worth on the next card, you start making decisions that feel close, or reasonable, or justifiable, even though the math is quietly draining your bankroll behind the scenes. This is how players burn hundreds of hours of the table and never improve, not because they're playing wildly, but because they're playing slightly wrong in the same spots over and over. They're calling with hands that don't have the right price. They convince themselves they're not far behind. They're using optimistic river thinking instead of realistic one-card thinking. And here's the part that hurts the most. You never notice the money you don't win. You only notice the pots where the wrong call happens to get there. The quiet losses, the ones that add up, stay invisible. But the math never lies. If the pot is offering less than the true odds of improvement on the next card, the call is wrong. And if you make that wrong call for years, the game feels swingy. When in reality, it's just expensive. Once you start aligning every decision with true next card equity, your results stabilize. Your bankroll stops leaking. And you begin to understand why high-level players fold far more often than amateurs think they should. It's not just discipline or cautious play. It's math finally applied correctly. This video is part one of a three-part series called Playing the Hand, the math behind every street. Today, we covered the lowest equity hands in poker, high card hands and pocket pairs that miss the board. These are the spots where players lose money without even realizing it, and learning the true next card math transforms your entire win rate. In part two, we look at the hands that sit in the middle. Flop sets, two pair hands, and gush shot straight draws. We'll break down why sets are the only hands in poker that gain outs as the hand develops, and why gut shots are some of the most misunderstood draws in the game. And in part three, we finish the series with the highest equity hands. Open-ended straights, flush draws, and powerful combo draws. This is where we'll dive into semi-bluffing math, fold equity, and how strong draws become profitable long before they actually get there. If you found value in this breakdown, hit like, share it with someone who needs real poker math, and subscribe so you don't miss the next two parts. This is Terry Wood from PokerRailbird.com, and as always, we'll see you at the tables.